Judgment Day, the day Sarah was told the war would start, clearing the path for humanity's successor. The machines. Future War. For Terminator 2, Cameron mobilized an army of actors, stunt people, and special effects crews to create the final battle between humanity and the machines. This battle took place on many levels in Terminator 2, as the crew executed one successful vehicle stunt after another. That is a cut! That is a cut! One scene required the Terminator to climb from a speeding pickup onto a heavy tanker, a feat performed by Arnold's stunt double, Peter Kent. After a successful spin-out, the truck was rolled onto its side and dragged by a team of tractors. Peter rode the sliding tanker like a surfboard. To protect young John Connor, the human resistance has sent the Terminator itself. My mission is to protect you. Who sent you? You did. Oh, this is deep. Playing the role of young John Connor is newcomer Eddie Furlong. It's almost, in a way, the classic, the classic story. I mean, he literally was just plucked off the streets of Pasadena and uh, whipped into the vortex of, uh, of making a movie. And Jim said, Eddie, I was going to tell you Friday, but don't tell anybody. But we're gonna, we picked you for this film. And I, I felt like hugging Jim, but he's a guy, so I didn't hug him. Cast with less than a month before production, Eddie began an intense period of preparation in addition to his regular education, he received physical training, acting lessons, and motorcycle classes. Funny thing is, I'm sure it's nothing like anything he ever expected, and it's a total left turn in his life. But on the other hand, children have this remarkable capacity to just deal with things, whatever life throws them. They don't know how the world is supposed to be yet, so they just think, that's, that's okay, you know, it can be like this if it wants to be. One of the many tasks Stan Winston and crew undertook was enhancing the original Terminator makeup design. Originally there were a, a number of stages designed or considered as Arnold stages in makeups for this particular production. An actor must know going into a situation like this that there is physical stress with this process. Fortunately, Arnold Schwarzenegger is a, is a pro. Three more hours of this. I don't know how much longer I can take this. He attacks it as a pro. He doesn't complain. All right. But I need my foot massages, my oatmeal, my Austrian Christmas music. I need it all. Go ahead. Do it. This pre-made up piece here is going to be glued to Arnold's face with the help of Arnold holding it. Hold on a second. Okay, now, it's the glue we use. It makes these arms pop up and get all swollen. On days when the makeup doesn't turn out 100%, I just sneak by the camera and rub a little Vaseline on the lens, and then everything looks fine. <laughs> Don't tell the DP that. He gets really upset. <laughs> this was so funny. <laughs> During the production, Makeup artists Jeff Don and Steve Laporte and hairdresser Peter Tothball would transform Arnold into the flesh-covered Terminator an estimated 35 times, totaling six consecutive days in a makeup chair for Arnold. Not too much, because if you put too much blood on it, it uh, doesn't, you, you can't see the work that's been done. You can't see the metal and the flesh that's gone. It just looks like a big bloody mess, like you slap some hamburger on it. That's a good example, Jeff. Hamburger? I'm proud of well, it. I'm hungry right now, so okay. I thought I'd use hamburger. <laughs> People accept this possibility that there can be a, a blend between a human component and a machine component. And I think it's just an aspect of our lives right now that we're so surrounded by machines all the time. And the fact that we can accept that, to me, is the most amazing thing of all. What it is, is I'm too handsome. No camera can take all these good looks. So what they do in every movie, basically, is, is they put appliances on and terrible makeup on 
to kind of tone my looks down a little bit so I match up to the rest of the actors in the movie. <laughs> I'm, so I'm, tell me, Linda, what do you think? Uh, <laughs> I'm a little too pretty, too, for this movie, so... All right. Wow! <laughs> Was my breath that bad? Two and a half, three hours and he's done. The next stage for the makeup is stage five, six, seven. And it's basically the same that Arnold had before, just more chrome, more appliances. He'll have his eye plugged up so he won't be able to see out of it. And uh, it'll take probably an hour, hour and a half longer to put on. He's gonna love it. As one might imagine, Sarah has trouble accepting the Terminator as an ally. Although she doesn't know that he's going to come back, she knows that it's a possibility, so she's ready. No affection, you know, I, I've kept it really clean. Do you know what you're doing? I've detailed files on a human anatomy. I bet. Makes you a more efficient killer, right? Correct. Terminator in this film adapts no, 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 certain no. human characteristics. You gotta listen to the way people talk. And if someone comes off to you with an attitude, you say, Hasta la vista, baby. Hasta la vista, baby. That character slowly develops uh, by the very fact of hanging around a human being. Jesus, you're gonna kill that guy. Of course, I'm a Terminator. <sighs> listen to me very carefully, okay? You're not a Terminator anymore, all right? And, and all that registers, and I start dealing with all those uh, kind of emotions. The Terminator sent to kill young John is unlike any killing machine ever imagined. I call him a, a mimetic polyalloy, meaning that, it, that he's made of a substance that can imitate anything. Playing the T-1000 is Robert Patrick. Jim was looking for somebody that was sort of a mixture between the protector character, which was Michael Biehn in the first, and Arnold Schwarzenegger, which was, uh, which is the Terminator. And I think he was looking for somebody that could look like he could possibly just be a human, and yet could be uh, a Terminator, could handle the intensity to be in a Terminator. Well, I wanted to find someone who would be a good contrast to, to Arnold. If the 800 series is a kind of human panzer tank, then the 1000 series had to be a Porsche an advanced prototype Terminator who was uh, more fearsome than the old model. The thing I like about Robert was he, he kind of looks like a cat in a way. It's almost like it's about senses with him. You know, he, you feel that he's very in touch with the, with the world and analyzing it and observing it. My character wants to completely take out John Connor. That's his mission. A relentless tenacious killing machine and he won't stop though their missions are exact opposites both terminators stem from the same creator the unseen supercomputer called skynet so it's like this is the first time you've had to deal with evil because right. terminators don't fight terminators right. it never happens we stem from the same technology so we've got to have some like programming there are you the legal guardian of john connor that's right officer What's he done now? So we're both killing machines, we're just different types. There was a guy here this morning looking for him too. Yeah, a big guy on a bike. Has that got something to do with this? The, the new Terminator really with his new capabilities is, is, is much more threatening. Now I'm basically death. You know, they're running from death. Both Terminators are programmed to complete their missions at all costs and without question. But Sarah has decided to confront her destiny and takes matters into her own hands. I need to know how Skynet gets built. Who's responsible? The main most directly responsible is Miles Bennett Dyson. She decides that the only way to stop the future that she knows is going to happen is to kill the man that builds the chip that starts the war. In a very real way, she becomes the terminator of the, of the second film, at least at a kind of a psychological level. For cast and crew, Terminator 2 has been more than a reunion. It has been very intense to work and uh, uh, you know, a lot of night shooting and a lot of long hours and so on. 
see that? Did you see that? Oh, you just jumped around. I'm going to put the bike in these and bear it on. And I'm very honored and happy that I'm able to do the second one. In 1984, Cameron transformed Arnold into one of the screen's most memorable villains. Seven years later, the process is reversing itself. The Terminator is becoming a protector. Ultimately, the film is about...